Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, I have something kind of fun for you guys today. So in case you haven't noticed, I tend to enjoy wearing a smartwatch. Mostly because it's easy to like check my messages and it like tracks my movement. I have a much more sedentary job these days and it reminds me to get up and actually, you know, be a human being sometimes. That said, when I go out on like LARP adventures, it really stands out and kind of breaks the vibe a little bit. So I thought it would be fun to come up with a way that I could still wear it, but hide it so that it looks more in character. So that's today's episode. Today, we're gonna figure out how to generally hide a smartwatch or just any watch so we can still wear it while we're out on Epic Quest. Before we get going on that though, YouTube tells me that only like 80% of you watching right now are subscribed. And since we are like this close to 100,000, it would be dope if you guys could just go ahead and subscribe and really push us over the edge. At the end of the day, it's not really that important. Really, view count is what counts, but I don't know, I just wanna see that number. I've been working for it for a long time. <laughs> It'd be real nice. So yeah, if you could sub and share with people you think would like this, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. All right, I'm gonna level with y'all. Originally, I was gonna do my usual little shtick where I'm doing like a leather project. I'm gonna cut it out and tool it all by hand and do that. Which is fun and cool, and you've seen it kind of a million times at this point. But it just so happens that just when I was planning this, we got reached out to by a potential sponsor. A sponsor that was offering the opportunity to use something that I've always wanted to try. I give you the Creality Falcon 2. This is a laser engraver slash cutter, and I'm so excited to use it. Now, let me preface this by saying you could totally do this project without it. Everything like that this would do, you can instead just do by hand. So this project, if you're not looking for a laser cutter engraver, you can still totally do. But I thought it would be fun just to show you guys how this thing works. And honestly, I just wanted to use it. It sounds awesome. And just like any tool, it has its applications and it has some things that it's just gonna be better at than other things. We'll get into that in just a few minutes, but first, let's get to designing this thing. The first thing I did was lie my watch onto some of this grid paper, just so that I can get the general outline and the size of what I'm working with. Once I had it traced out, it was off to making an outline where I thought all the leather would fit in and look good around the watch. This was a completely creative exercise and kind of just off the top of my head to start with. The idea was to kind of spitball what the functionality would be and just get down that general look. It didn't need to be perfect. I just needed to try it out so that I can see what needed to be tweaked. Now, once I had that general design, I just used my phone to take a picture of it so that I can get it onto my computer. Now the program I'm going to be using today is called Adobe Illustrator, but if you want a free version, I would use Inkscape. It's how I kind of learned to use that type of program and it's completely free online. Now, as you can see before I took the picture, I laid a ruler down just as a frame of reference so I can make sure my drawing in the program is the same scale. Once I had it in place and sized how I wanted it, I used the pen tool and began outlining one half of the outer edge of the design that I made. So if I was doing this in a paper template, I would only draw that one half and then I'd fold the paper in half and cut it out. This way, when you opened it back up, you had a perfectly symmetrical design. To do the same kind of thing in this program though, I just copy and paste the drawing that I just made and then I flip it over vertically so that it's upside down. Then I line it up so that the edges just overlap. After that, I just have to hit the Unite icon to combine those two shapes, giving me one symmetrical outline. Now, as I like to do with most of my leather projects, I want to add just kind of a border outline to this. Was I just doing it on the leather, I'd use a wing divider all around the outside. In the program though, all I have to do is copy and paste that image that I had just made. Then I line it up so it's just over the top of it and rescale it and kind of adjust it to make that inner outline. Inner outline sounds wrong. Inner border? Border, that'll do. Now in the design I drew, the way I figured I'd actually connect the watch is by making some slits in that leather so that the band can actually fit on through it. To make that in here, I just busted out the rectangle tool and stretched it to the size and shape that I'm looking for. To give it rounded ends, I just did pretty much the same thing using the circle shape and appending them just to the end of those rectangles. Then I selected all of them and used the same Unite tool as earlier to combine them together into one shape. Then I copied and pasted it just to get the second one, moving it where I wanted. All right, so since I'm going to be using a laser engraver for this rather than just kind of tooling it, I can get really like intricate and fine with my detail. I really wanted to test this out really badly. So I jumped on a site that I use called Envato Elements, which is where I get like a lot of art and B footage for filming and all that. But on it, I found this really cool Celtic knotwork pack. 
It had all these really beautiful round emblems, squares, pieces you can use to make long knot work stretches. Just really intricate bits I could use to test out this laser on. So I just grabbed one of the little pendants that I thought looked really cool and sized it so that I could drop it right in the middle of my space here. Then I did the same thing with this cool ring shape, just sizing it around that pendant. Finally, I dropped in some of this knot work all along the bands. That basically finishes off what I'm looking for for like the underlayment underneath the watch that's actually gonna connect to me. To hide the watch itself, I figured there'd be a piece that can sit on top of it that I can kind of fold out of the way to see the watch when I want to. But this one was really easy to make. All I did was copy and paste that original outline I made and then just size it down and reshape it enough so that it would cover over those little slots in the band. By not selecting all the points, I mistakenly found out that I can get this really cool looking rounded ends. So I just kind of rolled with it. Then just like with the bottom piece, I added all the fun flare bits that I thought would look cool. Okay, so in researching actually how to use a laser cutter, I found out that, yeah, I can make all the engravings with, with the file that I just made, but in order to actually cut it out, when I selected it to cut it out, it's gonna follow everything I did. It would just cut into the leather all those cool designs I made. So in order to actually cut it out, I had to make like solid shapes that it would cut around. So to do that, I just kind of copied and pasted the outlines and then filled them with solid black. It'll make more sense when we go to cut it, but just for now, know that I took those two files and I saved them separately. The one with all the cool designs on it is gonna be my engraving one. And then the solid black ones are gonna be for my cuts. And just as a heads up, sure, I'm designing this digitally so that I can use it on a laser, but just spending a little bit of time to digitize a pattern makes it so that you can store it forever. It's infinitely adjustable. You can just make copies of it and change it as you want. So even if you're not using a laser cutter, I recommend you just trying to learn this skill. It's a good one to know. However, it's finally time to get to the moment of truth, the thing I've been waiting for. As I said, the model I was sent was the Creality Falcon 2. And right off the bat, I was really impressed with how nicely this thing was packaged. I don't want this thing to be a whole unboxing video, but I do want to show off just how easy this thing goes together. It was stupid. It came almost completely assembled. All I really had to do was put on the feet. It also came with this little air pump here, which is an integrated air assist. Basically, it'll automatically like blow air down onto your cut, blowing away any smoke and debris and just giving you a cleaner cut and kind of protecting the optics from the laser. It's really cool and it's built in. It's just a neat little feature. The laser itself is 22 watts, which is a really powerful one for a diode laser. Or so I've learned. Very powerful, actually. Anyways, it's super easily mounted just by sliding it onto the track and securing down the little bolts on the side. And this is gonna sound really silly and kind of petty about it, but man, the, the cable management system, the little clips, is just so perfect. I love when companies take that little extra time to make sure things like that are tight. That, that kind of wins me over a little bit. I love that shit. And honestly, that was pretty much it. The little thumb drive that came with it had all the software I needed in order to get started. And after about 10 minutes out of the box, this thing was ready to actually work. All I had to do was tape down my piece of six ounce leather onto the platform they gave me to help keep it flat. They also supplied this little piece of stepped metal to help you get the correct focal length of the laser. You just have to put it on the material and then lower the laser down until it touches the setting you're looking for. And I was crazy excited that just like that, this thing was ready to go. Now the program they sent along with it is one called Lightburn and it was crazy easy to use too. All I had to do was tell it which machine I was using which it saw and recognized right away. And then I just dropped in the engraving file that I wanted to do. The last thing I really had to do was dial in what I wanted the speed and the laser power to be to actually engrave this thing. Now I'm not gonna lie, I was really winging it when it came to this. I know one big selling point for this unit is that it can actually move like engrave at a speed of 25,000 millimeters per minute, which is like, it's super fast, it's really fast. But since this is honestly, you're seeing my very first time ever using a laser printer, I figured I'd kind of play it safe. So I set the laser power a little bit lower than I think I needed. And I also set that speed a little slower. And just like that, I was lasering, laser engraving. I was doing the thing. I can't believe how easy it was to get this thing started and running. And just how detailed it comes out. Like I could totally see using this thing to like, mass produce a bunch of products or making cool gifts or just kind of one-off projects like this. It's just 
It's one of those tools that once you've used it, you're like, oh, the possibilities, they're endless. Really fun. I like this thing. <laughs> now for my first pass, I think I had the laser power down a little bit low because it came out really light. So I just amped it up a little bit and sent it through on a second pass. And this one was absolutely perfect. Nice and dark and the details were super crisp. Now to actually cut this thing out, did I use a knife? No, of course I didn't use a knife. I have a laser. God, so cool. Instead, I just put the solid black file right where the other one was. Then I told Lightburn to actually outline it. After removing that background, all that was left was the outline. Lightburn's really cool too. It actually shows you a preview of how it will actually cut this thing out. And this time, I decided to really show off the speed and power of this thing. I amped up the speed and I amped up the power to cut it out. And I was crazy impressed with how fast this thing cut the shape out and how exactly precise it was. Like it was perfect. Though I'm definitely gonna have to get myself some kind of a different ventilation setup to use this thing. Like my little makeshift vent fan here drew away some of it, but there's still like a bunch of smoke just floating around. And burning leather, that is a special kind of smell. It's just, it was everywhere. It sticks to the walls, it's terrible. <laughs> I still smell it, it's everywhere. Still, look how perfect these cuts are. Even the little openings where my watch bands are gonna go inside just pop right off, super clean. And the detail is just perfect. Like way more clean than I ever could have gotten with my hand tools. At least at my current skill level. They are fantastic. For real, this, this here, this is a sponsorship. They're paying me and they provided me with the laser cutter and all that in order to check it out. Even if they weren't. I would be down with this thing. I love this thing so much. It's one of my new favorite tools. If you have any inclination or you're just thinking about it at all, check out the link in the description below. Give it a visit. Um, honestly, I really love this thing. It's pretty cool. <laughs> From here, I just started working on the edges using the beveler to get away any of that burn and kind of making everything look more clean. Still, I was kind of obsessed at this point with dialing in those settings. So in the background, I started doing another one just kind of amping up the, the power a little bit more and slowing down the speed a little bit maybe. And look at how clean this one came out. The difference was night and day. Dialing in these settings is definitely a must and something I gotta spend a little more time learning, but it looks so clean. Oh God, it's so good. <laughs> okay, from here on, if you don't have a laser cutter and you just cut this out by hand, we're back to just regular old leather crafting. So as I said before, I had this idea that like there'd be a piece that would cover over the top that I can rotate out of the way so I can see my watch. And I really wanted that top bit to conform around tightly to my watch. I didn't want to just kind of like be over it flat. I wanted to have the shape of the watch. So in order to do that, I first grabbed this hole saw bit that was about the same size around as the outside of my watch face. Then I used that to cut a hole out of this little block of wood and then rounded off the edges with some sandpaper so that it wouldn't bite into my leather too much. Next, I took that top bit of leather and just threw it in some warm water to make sure it soaks all the way through. Doing this makes the leather super pliable and able to be wet formed around my watch. After making sure my watch was powered down, I wrapped it in some plastic wrap just to protect it from the moisture. Then positioned that leather thing right on top of it and began to wet form it around just by hand to get the general shape I'm looking for in place. Once that was about where I wanted it, I positioned my wooden piece just on top of it, pressing it down onto the leather to make sure it's laying exactly where it needs to go. Then added some weight on top of it and left it to dry for a day. Coming back to it, I found that the leather had hardened exactly into the shape I wanted it. It was absolutely perfect. I am so glad it came out this clean and look at how much of that design pops. And again, this is something that'd be hard to do with hand tooled stuff. Normally when you try to wet form after you've hand tooled it, you mush up all the stuff you've made. But like the engraving had no problems. Didn't get mushy, didn't disappear. It was perfect. And it fits onto my watch, perfectly hiding it. Honestly, it's exactly what I wanted. It's so slick. Happy with that, I went ahead and dyed both pieces a nice light brown. Then I hit them with some resist just to keep everything protected as well as keeping any rub off from the dye from getting on my watch and clothing. With those dyed and honestly looking sexy, it was time to start combining them together. Now in order to actually make it so that that piece could swivel out of the way, I didn't want to put a rivet down because I was afraid it would lock it in too tightly. So instead, I went ahead and dropped a hole into that top piece right on one of the ends. Then I lined it up where it would sit onto that bottom piece so that I could mark out where that hole sits 
and punch another hole. Then I just use this little screw-on attachment to give myself not only a cool little piece of hardware, but also a point where those two pieces can swivel away from each other as needed. Next, I punched a hole on the other side of that top piece and used a razor knife to make a small little slit in the bottom of it so it was almost like a keyhole. This allows it to accept a button. Then lined up with that button hole, I put the Sam Brown button on the bottom piece of leather. This allows me to easily close the watch cover and gives me this really cool looking wrist strap while still giving me the ability to pop it open and check my watch as needed. Now to hold that whole assembly closed, I actually just cut and dyed this little tiny strap of leather here. That I just locked into place with a rivet on one side, and then on the other side I put in another Sam Brown button so that I can keep it shut. Okay, but that was the last step, the moment of truth now. Let's see how this thing works. First, I went ahead and slid my watch into those slots that I made. And already, this thing is looking kind of dope, just sitting in the middle of that ring there. To hold it on, I just attached the watch as usual with the band. Then I just locked the leather band into place. And look at how pretty this thing is. The details are gorgeous, and I love the general vibe of it. Sure, it's kind of big, but honestly, it's not a heck of a lot bigger than some of the other stuff that I wear during trips anyways. And it totally looks the part. Oh dear, do we, do we need to check the time? No worries, we just unbutton that top and have a look. Simple and easy. Then just close it back up and the whole thing is hidden again. Now at first, I was a little upset that if you really look, you can see the underside of the watch. But actually, it turned out to be kind of a happy accident because that just means I have access to the buttons on the side. So I can like silence a call if it's coming through or just generally work my watch as I need to. All in all, I am super stoked with how this thing came out. The detail is just, again, man. I, the, the ad portion's over at this point. They only wanted like a two minute ad and I basically turned it into an episode because I love this thing so much. It's really, it's really fun to use. I think it was cool. Now I'm eager to know what you think of this project or if there's a different way you could see yourself approaching this. Also, I'm kind of inspired. Let me know what you think about projects I could do with the laser engraver. I am totally down with making stuff to like give away to you guys or maybe like special gifts for my Patreon members. So yeah, tell me the kinds of stuff you'd be interested in so I can start planning to go that route. I'd love to use this to make stuff for you guys. Now, I hope you like this project. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that and it's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are my Patreon members and they are the reason we can do any of this stuff. Thanks to their generous giving, this channel has been able to grow and kind of take on bigger projects and just really exist, honestly. This stuff costs money and honestly, without them, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. And a special thanks to my newest high tier level Patreon member, Jonathan Ropek. Ropeki, Rop Ropki, you're gonna have to leave down in the description how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry, I'm terrible with names. Anyways, if you like what we do here and like to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that's a really good way to support us too. But I'm out of a drink, which means this episode is officially done. That's gonna be a thing from now on. When I finish my drink, the episode's over, no matter what.